Hi there. Continuing in the series on kit, um, I'd like to talk a little bit today about what we wear on the range and for firearms training. So it's uh, basically firearms fashions. Now, I first started um, pistol shooting in uh, late 1974 and at that time I used to wear um, a blazer, um, slacks, uh, uh, a nice cotton shirt and a silk tie. That, that would be my daily wear. So uh, I'd go to the range wearing that and quite often in the daytime John Clark, my good, good mate, um, had the keys to the range and he'd pick me up and we'd go down there and this is before I had my own firearm certificate and we'd use his um, uh, 41 Magnum and his pump action shotgun and do some, some training and I'd be wearing that rather uh, nice clothing and it, it was okay even though shooting can be rather dirty and, and gun powder and so on but um, the first time we went to Alka, the outdoor range, uh, I, I never really kind of twigged that it was different and I turned up with my nice, nice highly um, gleaming leather shoes and my blazer tie and so on and um, the grass was uh, wet from the dew and uh, it was a quite, quite a miserable experience, it's very windy there. It wasn't raining, but the, the weather wasn't so good. And I realized that for outdoor training, you needed some other kit. And back then, really, the only suitable stuff was um, military surplus. Or I got hold of um, a DPM camouflage jacket from a mate in the Marines and uh, used to wear that. And um, a, a pair of, um, I, think, I think I wore jeans then for for outdoors but then I got a pair of OG trousers and that, that was about it later on and you couldn't get baseball caps we used to see pictures of the American guys uh, shooting in baseball caps you just couldn't get one um, the first one I ever got was a freebie given away uh, it was a beer promotion called 45 beer and uh, the, the baseball cap had called 45 on it which seemed appropriate and then Terry came back from LA and he gave me an LAPD um, pistol and revolver club baseball cap. So I wore that for, for quite a bit. Um, the problem with the camouflage jacket, and I've seen this written in forums uh, on, on to do with shooting, is it, it's got drawstrings and it's very easy for them to get tangled when you draw, and it did happen to me. And um, it's a big no-no if you have any kind of jacket that's got waist drawstrings or any kind of drawstrings cut them off they inevitably find their way somewhere into the pistol then sometime later a friend of mine claymore chris was on a protection job in the united states he was filling in on i think on the bandar team uh, Prince Bandar and um, he had visited the Banana Republic shop and he said to me um, he, he had a Banana Republic jacket um, vest and he, he said it's a great place anyway um, I went to the States uh, the first bodyguard course we did there was in Detroit and Evan Evan Marshall we had a free day and he said is there any way you want to go and I said I'd like to visit Banana Republic and there was one in Gross Point. And I thought it was like a military surplus shop or an outdoor shop, but it's not. It's a yuppie store. Uh, but they did have um, the vests. Uh, uh, they didn't have this colour. And I, I picked up a blue one. Uh, and just as an aside, um, the next uh, store was a bookshop and they had the Silence of the Lambs which had just been published that day and I bought it. Um, anyway, uh, a company called Regatta um, produced really good pants for uh, range wear. Uh, 
they were they were for travel really uh, and I found them ideal had lots of zip pockets and you could put all your stuff in but they were great for travel uh, one of the things I used to do I put my passport in one of the zip pockets put some paracord on it and loop it around the belt so it was secure um, I, w I wore those for quite a while uh, until uh, Royal Robins came out and um, they uh, produced a line uh, Royal Robins was a mountaineer and these were for outdoors and we found them really really great and um, I was given a few pairs by a friend of mine who was running um, training for a police department over in the States they were really good and uh, at one time you couldn't get black the only people who could get black Royal Robins were the FBI uh, and then uh, I managed to get a pair from the same source uh, but then Royal Robins became 511 and uh, any colour was available and I, I still wear them I still wear 511s uh, quite a bit now then The idea of um, bridging the gap between ops and, and training um, with the same kind of clothing became a factor and the ideal for that is the barber. I, I, uh, I put some pictures at the beginning of this um, but I'll just show the barber as well um, and, and that's it. the waxed, famous waxed cotton jacket. The thing I like about the barber is, is it's functional, it works, it's waterproof, uh, it's warm, and it's acceptable if you're in the Dorchester Hotel or at Bisley. Um, it covers both. And um, my particular one, it's all, all it's been repaired uh, both by Barbara itself and by me in my amateur fashion and it doesn't really matter because they don't, it doesn't matter that they can be a little bit old looking um, that's part of it um, for a long time we wore these the Banana Republic vests um, you could wear them on certain bodyguard ops uh, and they're great for the range got lots of pockets uh, famously I don't know if we can see here it has diagrams inside of the pockets uh, there's, there's lots of little clips and so on this is handy a little uh, key clip here and we always used to put the keys to the VIP car a spare set of keys there so if the keys were ever locked inside which happened sometimes I, I'd heard about on the military one of the military teams you, you've got the spare keys there um, so very good I, I still if I'm on the range will wear this because uh, I, I always train concealed then um, regarding trousers um, a, a lot of them even though 511 um, and I got some other um, trousers in the States uh, from various companies Kabbalah um, I, Cabela's rather sorry um, made absolutely great trousers and the belt loops were in the correct positions now a lot of them they don't you, you want the belt loops to bracket where you want the holster and your magazine pouches and a lot of them don't actually do that and you might have to modify them um, at the moment um, uh, my favourite is a true spec uh, and one of the pictures shows a true spec pants and they uh, they seem to do the job very very well. That's the kind of thing I wear every day. Then um, I was on a um, a training job in Germany, training the, the U.S. Uh, military in close protection, and uh, it was raining, and I didn't uh, have a, a suitable rain garment with me. And I borrowed uh, a Gore-Tex from one of the guys, and it was um, 
in, in camouflage, but you could buy it in the um, the store on 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 the on the base in the PX. So I went in, but unfortunately they only had camouflage. Now a point by camouflage, I, I say that in the first um, first really outdoors clothes I, I had was a, a DPM, but later on. Um, the association we were in, in for combat shooting in the UK, uh, I think maybe this even applied worldwide, banned camouflage for image reasons. I, and I, I did agree with it. Um, there was one character who used, used to rock up to shoot wearing a full German um, a, a sort of um, coverall suit in camouflage. And it looked ridiculous. And so um, we went away from camouflage and uh, so I, I wanted a black uh, Gore-Tex. Anyway, next time I was in um, uh, in Minneapolis with Marcus, and he knows all the outdoor stores there. And uh, I went to buy uh, a black Gore-Tex, and we went around the mall, and it was the very last store, and it wasn't even on the rail. It was lying on top of the rail, and it was this one. There's a picture of it I've shown, uh, but this is it, um, which it, it all folds into the, its own hood, and it's it's very compact, so I, I can put it in my backpack and keep it because I've, I've got a thing now. Um, we did we did uh, an ILFE regional in Dayton, Ohio, and it was in the summer, and I'd been there previously, and it was scorching. So I didn't take uh, any wet weather gear and it was the worst storms the Midwest had had. One of the ranges was actually underwater. Um, so I made a, a, a commitment then that wherever I go, I will take my Gore-Tex with me. If I did a course on Mercury, I'd take my Gore-Tex. Um, the weather on the, the ranges in the UK, the outdoor ranges, a lot of them are on estuaries and so on. And you know, you've got the wind going sideways and you do need good um, wet weather equipment, whether it's Gore-Tex, whether it's a barber, whatever. Footwear, widely available, always has been. You can get decent um, uh, boots. Uh, some of them are Gore-Tex lined and so on. And uh, I've got a pair of Dana boots. Um, does the job, thin uh Gore-Tex, everything. It's really good stuff. Uh, I will put um, a link to an article I did on, on the Ops Vest uh, and also on the Barber, uh, so you can follow up on that. So that's just a, a few thoughts on uh, how different types of clothing fit in to uh, training on the range. Uh, you want stuff that is easy, easy to clean, does the job, has lots of pockets. You, you've got your lesson plans and so on, your stopwatch, uh, electronic timer or whatever, spare magazines, uh, pens, and notebooks and stuff. Um, uh, it, it, it will take all the stuff you need. Um, and uh, you know, maybe a couple of first aid dressings or whatever in there as well. So. That's a few of my thoughts and I hope you found it interesting.